Welcome to the next lecture. Uh, I think it's fourth lecture of Math 120. Uh, let me now see the setting. Uh, can I change? No. If you have any questions regarding the previous lectures, you can ask me. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask a question. Gee, gee, go sir, is it necessary for the row elimination method to end up on reduced each line form or we can stop once we have reached the each line form? Uh, repeat. Uh, I think you said same things. Sir, it is necessary to uh, to stop our row elimination method once we have reached the each line form or we should go for the reduced each line form. Okay, that's uh, that depends uh, the method you are using. Now today we are going to discuss reduced HLM form. Uh, in the previous lecture, we discussed how to convert uh, a matrix into HLM form. Okay, and Gaussian elimination method. Today, we are going to further uh, reduce a matrix into HLN form, further into the reduced HLN form. Uh, Gee, yes. Uh, is there any question? That the question is that are we like uh, converting the uh, Achillon form into reduced Achillon form, or we are like start, uh, starting with the Gaussian elimination method and converting that into reduced Achillon form? Uh, it's the same thing. In order to convert a matrix into reduced Achillon form, first you have to reduce it into Achillon form, simple Achillon form. Then you do the further steps in order to reduce it into reduced Achillon form. And that method would be called Gauss Jordan method to solve the linear systems. Gauss Jordan elimination method. These two are basically elimination methods because we are eliminating the variables uh, which we do not like. Gauss Jordan elimination method. Not like, but we uh, basically eliminate those variables uh, which uh, help us to find the solution of the linear system directly. So in the previous lecture, HLN forms, uh, one thing which I wanted to discuss, uh, there is a question in the chat window. Let me read that. Sir, can you ask students to go question after? Uh, after you are uh, taught one thing, in this way the lecture becomes super confusing and scattered for us. Okay, uh, kindly ask the questions uh, when I ask you for, okay? So that other students, they do not get disturbed. Once I finish a, a particular topic uh, after four or five minutes, uh, I'll take a little pause and ask you for questions. Till that moment, kindly hold your questions and then you can ask me the questions. So HLN forms uh, were basically uh, a matrix of the form. The first non-zero entry of each row should be one, I told you. For example, if you have zero here, <clears throat> you can make one here, okay? The first non-zero in this row should be one. Other entries, do not matter whatever they are, you don't care. In the next row, the first non-zero entry should be on the right of the non-zero entry in the previous row. So you must have zero here, you must have zero here, you have to make one here on the right of uh, the previous non-zero entry. And the rest of the entries could be anything, you don't care about them. These are some entries of any kind, they are real numbers basically. 
in the next row you must have zeros here till here and then you might have zero here you can have one here so this is the first <clears throat> and second property of the echelon form the first property is first non zero entry in each row should be one and in each successive row in each next row the non zero entry should be on the right of the non zero entry in the previous row so these are on basically on the right hand side of the previous non zero entries okay which are one so rest of the entries uh, they do not matter whatever they are uh, so next we can write here 0 0 0 1 whatever you have here and in the end you can have zero rows here okay so uh, another property to the echelon form you can add uh, in fact in some books they have added this property that in an echelon form uh, all the zero rows all the zero rows are at the bottom of the matrix okay uh, in the previous lecture we discussed uh, three properties of the echelon form i think uh you can add another property to that echelon form that all zero rows zero row of a matrix is what uh, a row whose all entries are zero that we call a zero row of a matrix and um, a column zero column is that column in which all the entries are zero so all the zero rows should be at the bottom of the matrix then this matrix is basically in the echelon form if you have any question regarding the echelon forms you can ask me uh this is basically these are the properties of the echelon form kindly mute your mics uh, otherwise i can do that but i would request you all to mute your mics okay now these ones the first non zero entry which are one in each row they are called pivot elements okay and uh i told you in the previous lecture that in order to make uh entry zero below any pivot element you can use only that pivot element you can use only that row okay in the previous lecture i told you that in order to make zero below one below one you can only use that pivot element or means you can use only that row in order to make zeros below that uh, non zero entry in that row there's a question in the chat window let me see it uh, does an echelon form with a zero row indicate infinitely many solutions yes who is this mariam name mariam name asked a question does uh, a zero row in any uh, echelon form of a matrix indicate that there exists infinite many solutions uh, yes there are other ways uh, to see whether uh, a linear system has infinite many solutions or not but this is one of uh, the uh, thing which we can uh, say that if there is a zero row uh, in a in an echelon form of a matrix then there must be infinite many solutions otherwise there uh, is another thing you can see that how many unknowns are involved in this matrix if if it, if this matrix correspond to a uh, to any linear system and we have converted yes. that augmented matrix into augmented matrix into echelon form and how many unknowns are there this is first yes. unknown second third fourth fifth sixth and how many rows are there 1 2 3 4 five so if there are more number of unknowns than the number of equations then we must have uh, 
we must have free variables in that linear system. In that case also, the linear system must have infinite many solution if that linear system is consistent, okay? Consistent linear systems are those uh, linear systems which have at least one solution. Either they have one solution or they have infinite many solutions. Inconsistent systems, inconsistent linear systems are those linear systems which do not have any solution. I told you, I gave you the uh, definitions of uh, these things in the previous lecture. I hope you get it, Mariam. Okay, thank you. So now, uh, once the matrix, one the augmented matrix has been converted uh, into HLN form, then we go further uh, in order to reduce it into reduced HLN form. And that will basically make us, uh, make for us easy to solve that given original linear system, okay? When we convert um, an augmented matrix into HLN form, we have to use backward substitution in order to find the variable, uh, find the values of the other variables. But if you converted uh, an augmented matrix into reduced HLN form, you don't have to use backward substitution. You would definitely uh, immediately get the solution for, for, for the system, okay? Now, uh, let us do this with the help of uh, an example. Uh, uh, I should get, I should write a three by three system. In the yesterday's example, uh, which we took uh, previously in the last, uh, let me see that. You can ask me any question if you have. Meanwhile, uh, let me find some yes, appropriate sir. example. GG. Okay, this entire thing is like Gaussian elimination method. We have not uh, like reached Gauss Jordan elimination method by now. Uh, can you repeat? I didn't listen it properly. Can you repeat it? Sir, this particular example, which we have done right now, this is Gaussian el elimination method, as far as I remember from the last lecture. Yes. So have, this we, is... have we reached Gauss-Jordan elimination method by now? No. Okay. Gauss-Jordan method is basically, uh, you have to convert uh, a given augmented matrix, which corresponds to the given linear system. You have to convert, uh, or you have to uh, huh, convert it into um, reduced HLN form and your uh, augmented matrix is still in the HLN form. It is not in the reduced HLN form. Uh, along with the other properties of uh, HLN form, uh, or you can say that in addition to the properties of HLN form, uh, there is one more property which you uh, have to apply here in order to convert it into reduced HLN form. Let me add the people so that uh, they... now these are pivot elements the first non zero uh, entry in each row they are called pivot elements and we make them one in hln form we have to make zeros below this pivot entry below below each pivot entry in in that row in reduced hln form what we do the, the next property or fourth or fifth property, whatever it is, in, in addition to those three properties of H1 form, we have to follow this thing as well. Uh, we have to make, make zeros above each pivot entry. What does it mean? Uh, if you have a pivot entry here, you have to make above uh, it all the zeros, all the entries, you have to convert them, you have to make them zero. So we don't have uh, entries above here. So here, you have to make this one zero. You have to make this one zero. You have to make these one 
zero, you have to make these ones zeros. If you do that, now your matrix is in the reduced HLN form. Okay, and how to make entries above the pivot element zero, you can use only that pivot entry. You can use only that row. In order to make zeros above this entry, you can use only this pivot entry or this row. You cannot use any other row in order to make this thing zero. This is very important, okay? Now, in order to you, in order to make zeros, these entries zero, you can only use this pivot entry or this row. You cannot use any other row in order to make zeros here above a particular pivot element. Similarly here, in order to make zeros above this pivot entry, you can only use this pivot entry or this row uh, in order to make these entries zero. I hope you get it. Now, other than pivot entries, you don't need to make zeros above uh, above that uh, in in this column. You can you should only uh, make zeros above the pivot entries. Okay, here here. Now, if you have any question, you can ask me. I'm waiting for your questions. Anybody? तो पहले आपने कन्वर्ट करना है किसी भी मैट्रिक्स को एच एल एन फॉर्म में एंड देन यू हैव टू डू फर्दर स्टेप इन ऑर्डर टू कन्वर्ट दैट मैट्रिक्स इन टू रिड्यूस्ड एच एल एन फॉर्म so both pivot entry ke niche bhi zero hone chahiye that is the requirement of hln form a reduced hln form ki kya requirement hai ke us pivot entry ke upar bhi zero hone chahiye okay, okay sir, now thank you now this matrix is in reduced hln form okay now what is the advantage of uh, reduced hln form over the hln form let's do this uh, with the help of an example uh for example this one maybe uh let me have some example sir ji ji bole ye jo zero row thi ye non zero rows ke middle mein ya upar aa sakti hain uh nahi all the zero rows should be at the bottom of the matrix augmented matrix sir thank you okay that will make uh, your simplifications easy i hope you get it uh kal humne ek example ki thi jisme humne unique solution find kiya tha uh ha ye wali nahi ye wali thi shayad let me do let me take the same example which we took in the previous lecture so that uh, i can write it directly into the hln form ha ye wali thi shall nahi ye wali nahi thi this was not that example uh, it was nothing i don't know let's take this one let's do it now uh, a linear system using uh, or by converting the corresponding augmented matrix into reduced hl form now the linear system is 2x1 plus x2 is equal to 3 and uh, minus x1 plus 2x3 is equal to 4 and 4 x1 minus 2 x2 plus 7 x3 is equal to 0 so this is uh, our linear system 
and we need to solve it by using Gauss Jordan elimination method, or we have to convert and uh, solve it using using Gauss Jordan elimination eliminations. Okay or elimination method. First, what do we do here? We write the corresponding augmented matrix. And I hope you know what is an augmented matrix. You write that whole linear system into a matrix form uh, in a way that you, you write the coefficient matrix and then the right hand side vector in, in the same matrix. So it is two, one, zero, minus one, zero, two, four minus two and seven. And here you write the right hand side vector, which is three, four, zero. So you can put a line here in order to differentiate between the coefficient matrix and the right hand side vector. Now, what we do here, uh, we try to make the first non-zero entry one. And how can I make it? Uh, the easiest, easiest way, uh, this is basically step one, according to the method which we discussed in the previous lecture. Step one, what we do here, we, we can apply one by two R1, this operation, in order to get one in the first non-zero entry uh, in a first row. So we can divide it by one by two, and we can uh, obtain what? one here, one by two here, zero and three by two, okay? Minus one, zero, two, four, all other rows, they will remain same, zero, okay? Now you have pivot element in the first row. This is your pivot element. Now you can use this pivot element or this row in order to make zeros below this pivot entry, okay? What operations uh, I can apply here in order to make zeros here? So I can say that uh, R1 plus R2, and this goes to change R2, row two. I'm gonna add R1 into R2, so in order to get zero here. So what do we get here? In, in this operation, uh, row one will not change. Only the row two will be changed. Row one and row three, they will not change. So row one, you can write it uh, as it is. Row three, you can write it as it is. And then you can apply. Uh, you can add first row into second row. You get zero here. You get one by two here. You get two here. You get four plus... Uh, three by two, four twos are eight, three eleven by two. So you get this thing. Now, what you have to do further, you have to make this entry zero, okay? For this, uh, what we do, we are going to use an operation, which is what negative four R1 plus R3. And which row is going to change? R3. This operation is needed here in order to make this entry zero. So, I have so a quick, quick question. GG, yes. So why did you follow this step, this R3, when we don't have uh, one uh, next to zero in uh, second row? Uh, here? No, no, so the, the bottom one. The bottom one, here. We have a zero here. So, but shouldn't we be multiplying the second row with uh, two in order to make one so that we are following the echelon form because one should be uh, successively uh, in, in the sec first row. Yes, yes, yes. Have you seen my previous lecture again? Or have you attended my previous lecture? Yes, sir. What did I say? How to follow the procedure? What procedure you have to follow? in order to convert a matrix into HLN form or a reduced HLN form. The first step is to make one zero, uh, one here, and then zero below it. 
okay you have to follow this procedure otherwise you would not be able to convert a matrix into hln form throughout your life i guarantee you because agar aap ye procedure follow nahi karenge uh, koi dusra procedure follow karenge for example jaise aap keh rahe ho ki aap yahan pe 1 bana lo theek hai aur phir yahan pe 0 bana lo to yahan pe phir aapke zero dobara disturb ho jayenge you have to follow the same procedure you can make a code for uh, solving linear systems by using this procedure even in, in, even on computer one pehle yahan pe banana hai fir uske niche zero fir next row pe aana hai वन यहां पे बनाना है उसके नीचे जीरो फिर ये नीचे और ऊपर दोनों जीरो बना सकते हो आप बेसिकली एट द सेम टाइम फिर नेक्स्ट रो में आना है आपने फर्स्ट नॉन जीरो एंट्री को वन बनाना है ऑन द राइट एंड देन यू हैव टू यूज दैट पिवर्ट एंट्री इन ऑर्डर टू मेक जीरो बिलो दैट एंट्री यू कैनट यूज एनी अदर एंट्री टू मेक जीरो बिलो दैट एंट्री दैट पिवर्ट एंट्री रिमेंबर दिस आई होप यू गैट इट ना द नेक्स्ट माइनस फोर से इसको मल्टीप्लाई कर दें फर्स्ट रो को यहां पे नेगेटिव फोर आ जाएगा यहां पे नेगेटिव टू आ जाएगा यहां पे जीरो और नेगेटिव फोर से मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे तो टू टू आर फोर एंड माइनस सिक्स यहां पे आ जाएगा नाउ यू आर गोइंग टू एड दिस रो इन टू दिस रो सो व्हाट डू यू गेट हियर फर्स्ट रो सेम रहेगी सेकेंड रो विल ऑल्सो रिमेन सेम एंड यू गेट जीरो हेयर बिकॉज यू आर एडिंग फोर माइनस फोर you get negative 4 here you get 7 here and you get negative 6 here so this is your matrix after applying that operation now you can see that this column is okay now you don't need to further do anything with this column now what are you going to do now you are going to make this entry 1 now how can we make this entry 1 we just multiply row 2 by 2 okay this will become 1 so after applying this operation you can have 1 1 by 2 0 3 by 2 uh 0 2 sorry not 2 1 multiplying by 2 is 4 and here you get 11 and the third row will remain same now you have this pivot entry in the second row now you have pivot entry in the second row and you have to use this pivot entry or this row in order to make zeros below it as well as above it okay now we are going to make this thing zero and this thing zero but we can use only the row which has that particular pivot entry now what operation i can apply here in order to make this one zero we can use only this row so i can say that 4 r2 plus r3 and what is going to change row 3 is going to change i hope you get it now uh, we are going to apply this operation so aap ke pass kya aa jayega first row will remain same and second row will remain same the third row will change the third row will become zero here माइनस फोर से मल्टीप्लाई करके ऐड करें जीरो हेयर नेगेटिव फोर से मल्टीप्लाई करें नेगेटिव सिक्सटीन प्लस सेवन नेगेटिव नाइन और नेगेटिव सॉरी फोर से मल्टीप्लाई करना नॉट नेगेटिव ऐड करना सिक्सटीन प्लस सेवन इज ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड फोर्टी फोर प्लस सॉरी फोर्टी फोर माइनस सिक्स इज थर्टी एट सो दिस इज योर third row new third row now you are going to make the entry above this entry zero pivot element okay uh upar wali ko zero kaise banayenge what operation is needed here uh you can use the same you, you should use the same pivot entry uh, so operation which we need here is to uh multiply this row with 1 by 2 or negative 1 by 2 and then add in this so negative 1 by 2 r2 plus r1 so which row is going to change row 1 is going to change 
There's a question in the chat window. Uh, sir, does the order matter? Can we convert the entry above one zero before converting the one below it? Yes, it doesn't change anything. Uh, I'll, I'll repeat the procedure here. I'll tell you again, once again. So now we are going to uh, basically convert this. We are going to make this entry zero. So all the other entries uh, in the second row and the third row, they would remain same. Now the first row is going to change. You are going to multiply this one, one minus one by two and add into this. So this will be, this will become zero, but there is no change here because when uh, in the first entry, when you multiply it by one by two and add it or subtract it from one, it, it would change nothing. It will remain one. So we get zero here. And now you have to multiply this thing with negative one by two and add it into the first row. Negative one by two means negative two, you get negative two here. So negative one by two, three by two. So here you got three by two, negative 11 by two. So it gives you uh, minus eight by two, which is negative four. So, you are done with the second column as well. You don't need to change anything in this column as well. First column is also okay. This is in reduced echelon form. This is in reduced echelon form. First non-zero entry is one. Below this entry all, you have all entries zero. Above, you don't have any entry. In the second row, you have a pivot entry here. You have zeros below and above this entry. This column is okay now. Now we are going towards the third pivot ele element, which is in the third row. Now we are going to make this entry one. How can we make it one? We have to divide third row by 123. So you get, uh, you have to divide row three by uh, 23. So what do you get now here? It is one, zero, negative two, negative four, zero, one, four, one, 11, sorry, zero, zero, one. You have divided it in uh, by 23. And here, what do you get? 38 by 23, this one. Uh, there is um, one who wants to join the meeting. Let me do it. Now you have this pivot entry now. What you are going to do now in order to reduce that matrix into reduced echelon form, this is the pivot entry. You must have zeros above this entry and below this entry. Below, we don't have any elements. Above, there are two elements. And now we are going to make these two, two elements zero. And how do we do that? We can only use this pivot entry or this row in order to make these two entries zero. Now, what operation do we need here uh, in order to make uh, the, the entries above this one zero? Let me, this one, okay. Now, the we are going to apply the operation uh, negative four R three plus R two. So what is going to change R2 in, in that matrix? So row three will remain same. It is 38 by 23. Row one will remain same. One, zero, negative two, negative four. Only the row two will be changed. So we get zero here, we get one here, we get zero here. And you have to multiply this thing with the negative four and add into here, and we have here 11 negative four times 38 divided by 23. Solve it and give me the value, please. It's 101 divided by 223. 101 divided by 23. 101 divided by 23. Thank you very much. Now, this entry has become now zero. Now, what are you going to do? You are going to make this entry zero. And for that, what you do, 
you multiply row three with two and add it to row one. And what is going to change? Row one is going to change. And you get here, aapka row two or row three same rahega. You write them uh, in a similar way, this one. Now, here you get one, here you have zero, here you have zero. Uh, you are multiplying this with negative two and add it, no, sorry. You are going to multiply this with two and add it here. So here, uh, kindly tell me the entry, it is minus four plus two times 38 divided by 23. Tell me this entry, please. So 168 over 23. 168 over 23. So now you are done with this augmented matrix. The given augmented matrix has been converted into reduced HLN form. Now look um, at all the properties, Jita. So is this value 168 over 23 correct? No, so it's minus um, 16. So minus 16 over yes, 23. Minus 16 20. 20. Yeah. Tell me the correct value then. Minus 16 over 23. Minus 16 over 23. It doesn't matter whatever the value is, um, but you have to write, of course, the correct values here. Now, this matrix has been converted into reduced HLN form. You can check all the properties of HLN form as well as the, uh, the property which we need uh, in addition to those properties of HLN form in order to convert a matrix into reduced HLN form. In each row, the first non-zero entry is one, that is okay. In each successive row, the first non-zero entry is on the right of the first non-zero entry in the previous row. That is also, also okay. In each pivot, uh, in each, uh, pivot entry, there are zeros below it and above it. Zeros below it and above it. Zeros below it and above it. So all the properties and all the zero rows are basically at the bottom of the matrix. There is no zero row, so we don't need to put them at the bottom. So all the properties of reduced excellent form uh, have been satisfied. So this matrix is basically uh, in the reduced HLN form. Okay, this is basically in the reduced HLN form. Now, as we have written uh, the augmented matrix corresponding to the given linear system, now we are going to write back the linear system corresponding to this matrix, augmented matrix. So what will be the corresponding linear system? You can immediately say that X1 is what? Negative 16 by 23. X2 is what? 101 by 23. And X3 is what? It is 38 by 23. So you get the solution immediately. You don't have to use the backward substitution as we did in Gaussian elimination method when we have converted the given augmented matrix into HLM form. In HLN form, we need to use the backward substitution in order to find the other values, uh, other variables. But uh, when you convert a given matrix into reduced HLN form, you, you would definitely get immediately uh, the solution of the system. So this is the advantage of reduced HLN form over the HLN form. I hope you get it. If you have any question, you can ask me now. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, sir. So, sir, the question is that uh, I you you did say like uh, row number two first. I did the opposite. I did uh, make zero for row number one first instead of going for row number two, and I got one sixty eight over twenty three. So the procedure which I told you that you have to make one here first. Let me repeat that procedure. Uh, the procedure which I followed here is the best practice to convert uh, any augmented matrix into reduced HLN form, okay? Uh, if you have any matrix, the first non-zero entry, you make it one, and then you make all the entries below it zero. And then 
you go to the second row you make a pivot element here if it is possible then try to make zeros below it and then above it by using only this pivot entry and next you go to the third row for example you get one here then you try to make zeros below here and then above here you don't have to make these things zero you can have anything here okay because there is no pivot entry here but below this thing you must have zero in order to satisfy the first property which is the first non zero init entry in each row must be one okay now the in the next row if you get one here pivot entry you make zeros here and then above zeros okay and then for example you get one here you get zero here you may have to make zero here and then zeros above this entry you don't need to make these uh, things zero so this is basically uh, the reduced hln form of a matrix this thing ji so my question is uh, i'm getting it that you you have to make uh, everything above one zero in the last column but my question is that does the order matter uh, do we have to start from the top to bottom or from bottom to top um it doesn't matter you can change this procedure but uh, you have to be correct in your calculations first you you go column wise okay i would advise all of you to go column wise you choose the first column and then after finishing with this column you go to the next column okay and then subsequent columns okay follow this procedure this will uh, basically uh, not affect your previous columns previous entries which you have already made zero if you don't follow a proper procedure then uh, by making these entries zero you would make other entries non zero again which will put you in a uh, an unending loop of converting these entries zero i hope you get it any further questions sir a question ji ji bole जिस तरह आपने पिछले क्लास में एग्जांपल दिया था इधर भी एग्जांपल दिया है कि कभी कभार वी कैन स्किप कॉलम्स जिसमें पेवेट एंट्री नहीं होती जिस तरह इस वाली मैट्रिक्स भी थर्ड कॉलम में पेवेट एंट्री नहीं है तो हमने जो एग्जांपल सॉल्व किए हैं उसमें तो हर कॉलम में पेवेट एंट्री थी तो ये हमारे ऊपर डिपेंड करता है या मैट्रिक्स के ऊपर डिपेंड करता है कि ये मैट्रिक्स के ऊपर डिपेंड करता है लेट्स हैव एन एग्जांपल इट्स माय फॉल्ट लेट मी गिव यू एन एग्जांपल इन व्हिच we can see that there are uh, pivot elements in certain columns and uh, there are uh, no pivot ele elements in other columns let me repeat let me take some example a lecture 2 maybe lecture 2 is where yeah let's solve this example depends on the linear system you you are having you look at the lecture slides and lecture notes notes which i have provided you you would definitely understand this now we we are going to solve this linear system by using gaussian elimination method or gauss jordan elimination method you you have to solve this this is an example given on the page on the slide 9 of lecture 2 so i'm going to solve it 2x3 plus 7x5 is equal to 12 and then 2x1 plus 4x2 minus 10x3 plus 6x4 plus 12x5 is equal to 28 and then 2x1 plus 4x2 minus 5x3 plus 6x4 minus 5x5 equal to 1 negative 1 so this is your linear system now now the corresponding augmented matrix is what it is 0 0 2 zero, 0 7 12 i listen to me okay 2 4 negative 10 6 12 28 
and two, four, negative five, six, six, negative five, negative one. So this is your uh, augmented matrix now. You need to solve that linear system. You converted it into a augmented matrix. Now uh, we are going to convert this matrix into first into reduced echelon form, and then we are going to solve it. The first non-zero entry should be one. So you have zero here. How can you make this one? Anyone, tell me. So you can replace row two by row one. Yes. Multiply by one by two. Try your best to make first non-zero non entry one here. If you have non-zero entries here, you can interchange rows in order to make this first entry non-zero. So that is correct. What we are going to do, R1 interchange it with R2, okay? So if we interchange row one and row two, you get two, four, negative 10, six, 12, 28. And row one will come here now, zero, seven, 12. And the row three will remain same, two, four, negative five, six, negative five, and negative one. Now, in order to make one here, what you do, you apply an operation one by two R1, okay? You divide row one by two. So what do you get here now? One, two, negative five, three, six, and 14. And all the other rows, uh, second and third, they, they will remain same. There'll be no change. Two, four, negative five, six, negative five, negative one. Now you have to make this, this is your pivot entry. This is your pivot entry. The next step is what? You have to make zeros below this entry. This is already zero. So you go for this now. You have to make this entry zero. What we need to apply here, negative two, R1 plus R3, and what row is going to change is R3. So now, uh, after applying this operation, the first row and second row will remain same. There will be no change in the first two rows. Now, the third row will change. You multiply this thing with negative two and add it to this. You get zero here, negative two, and add this. This becomes zero, negative two, and add it to there, you get five. Negative two, add it to this, get zero. Negative two, add it negative 17. Negative two and negative 29. You get this thing. Now you can see, uh, I hope you can see the complete board. Yes. Now you can see that in the second row, you have to make one here, but you have zero here. Try this one, no, you don't have non-zero entry here. You cannot replace with this entry in order to make one here because this one will come here. So you don't have to uh, disturb this pivot entry, okay? You can, in order to make non-zero entry here, you can only repla replace this row with this thing. If here you don't, if you, uh, if here you have a non-zero entry, but here also you have zero. So you cannot make a non-zero entry at this place. So go to the next place now. Here you have now try to make this entry one. How can we make it one? You just divide uh, the second row with negative two. Okay, if you apply this operation, you would get one, two, negative five, three, six, 14. Sir, wouldn't G. you make a five in row three one? Uh, this one? Yes, sir. Why? Um, sir, um, aren't we making values uh, in the main diagonal one? No. 
the first non zero entry in each row should be one okay yahan pe aapne bana liya hai next row mein aap ja rahe hain yahan pe one nahi ban sakta aap isliye you have to make this thing one now this okay. next okay. entry okay now you are going to make this one one so you have zero here zero here one here zero again negative 7 by 2 and then negative 6 you divided the whole row with negative 2 so the third row will remain same this one now what next you have pivot element in the second row now you have to make zeros below this entry as well as above this entry okay make them zero and tell me the matrix apply two operations i am waiting for you i am giving you 2 minutes for that thing and then tell me i'm going to pause the recording ne ho gi wo or 26 ho gi minus 20 uh, sorry ji minus 16 ho gi so after getting this matrix uh, after applying those two operations you you told me this matrix uh now what you are saying that which entry is incorrect 14 one in the first row in the first row 14 nahi hoga kya hoga minus 16 minus 16 kar lete chale theek hai now mere paas ab hum ji ji minus 23 upon 2 aa raha hai jo minus 16 ke liye sir mere paas ye minus 23 by 2 aa raha hai mere paas ye minus 23 by 2 whatever minus 23 by 2 minus 11 ki jagah aata hai ha bhai आप बाद में इसको तसली से कीजिएगा आपने करेक्ट वैल्यू वहां पे लिख लेनी है फिर वट एवर द करेक्ट वैल्यू इज नाउ आई एम अस्यूमिंग दैट दिस इज करेक्ट वैल्यू अस्यूमिंग ओके नाउ इन द थर्ड रो नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू मेक द फर्स्ट नॉन जीरो एंट्री वन द फर्स्ट नॉन जीरो एंट्री इज दिस थिंग now in order to make it one we multiply row 3 by 2 and we get one here now we get the next pivot entry in the next row this is your pivot entry and now you have to make zeros below this entry and above this entry so you have to make these two entries zero by applying two operations now uh, i ask you to apply two operations appropriate any appropriate operations in order to make this and this zero and tell me the resulting matrix but remember that you can only use this row in order to make these two entries zero you cannot use any other thing or any other row now tell me the matrix resulting matrix after applying two operations 1 2 1 2 जीरो थ्री जीरो जीरो आखिर में वन आएगा यस ओके इन द थर्ड रो यू गेट जीरो 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 वन एंड टू ओके So this is your sir, resulting matrix. Okay, if we keep minus sixteen as you said that keep this, so we get six uh, at the top instead of thirty six. Uh, challenge. Okay, 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 we get six. Now I am assuming that this is correct value. Okay, but later on you can check it. Now is this matrix a, is in reduced echelon form? anybody has any doubt check all the properties first non zero entry should be one hai in each subsequent row the first non zero entry should be on the right and right of the previous non zero entry in the above row ye bhi property true hai next all the zero rows are at the bottom of the matrix जीरो रोज है ही नहीं तो इट डजेंट मैटर अच्छा नेक्स्ट क्या है इन ईच पीवेट एंट्री फॉर ईच पीवेट एलिमेंट्री फॉर 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 अ पीवेट एंट्री इन ईच रो देर आर जीरो बिलो इट एंड अबव इट इज दिस ट्रू 
बिकॉज दिस इज योर पीवेट एंट्री इसके नीचे और ऊपर जीरो हैं दिस इज योर पीवेट एंट्री इसके ऊपर और नीचे जीरो हैं दिस इज पीवेट एंट्री इसके ऊपर सारे के जीरो हैं सो दिस मैट्रिक्स इज बेसिकली इन रिड्यूस्ड एच लन फॉर्म वंस द मैट्रिक्स हैज बीन कन्वर्टेड इन टू रिड्यूस एच लन फॉर्म देन यू राइट द कोरोस्पॉन्डिंग लीनियर सिस्टम एंड ट्राई टू सॉल्व इट नाउ इफ वी राइट द कोरोस्पॉन्डिंग linear system we get x1 plus 2x2 uh plus x30 x4 3x4 is equal to 6 corresponding to second row you get x3 is equal to 1 and corresponding to the last row you get x uh 1 2 3 4 5 x5 is equal to 2 so this is your corresponding linear system to this augmented matrix now why there are other variables appearing in in this thing because we have three equations and five unknowns we have three equations and five unknowns so you can find at most three variables you can find the values of at most three variables and two variables you must have to set them free variables so you can set any of the two variables here as free variables uh, for example let me uh, let me define uh, x2 ki value yahan pe nahi hai or x 4 uh, let's suppose i define x2 is equal to 2 and x4 is equal to Uh, t and this x4 is s where t and s are free variables and uh, they they belongs to r now after defining the values of uh, these things we can find yahan se dekhe x3 ki value aapke paas hai 1 x5 ki value 1 hai x2 aur 4 ko humne free variable le liya x1 ki value we can find it from here so x1 will be what let me write it somewhere here x1 should be what x1 is equal to from that uh, equation x1 is equal to 6 minus 2x 6 minus 2t Uh, 6 minus 2t because x2 is t, and then uh, negative 3s. Negative 3s. X2 is what? It is t. X3 is what? X3 is 1. X4 is what? S, and X5 is 2. Do you know? Yes. so this is your solution now you can write that solution in 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 vector form in this way x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 you can write it up the constant terms hain unko separate kar le this is your constant term this is your constant this is your this is your constant baakiyon ke sath aap zero laga sakte hain i hope you you can do that 6 yahan pe constant hai yahan pe koi constant term nahi hai यहां पे कांस्टेंट है यहां पे कोई कांस्टेंट नहीं है यहां पे टू है देन प्लस आप टी कॉमन ले लें टी के कोफिशियंट लिखें टी के कोफिशियंट फर्स्ट एक्स वन में क्या है नेगेटिव टू सेकेंड में टी का कोफिशियंट वन है थर्ड में नहीं है फोर्थ में भी नहीं है फिफ्थ में भी नहीं है प्लस एस को आप कॉमन ले लें एस का कोफिशियंट पहले में क्या है एक्स में नेगेटिव थ्री सेकेंड में एस का कोफिशियंट नहीं है थर्ड में भी नहीं है फोर्थ में वन है और लास्ट में भी नहीं है सो दिस इज योर सोल्यूशन एंड देर इनफिनिट मेनी सोल्यूशन यू कैन राइट हेयर टी एस बिलोंग्स टू आर सो इट्स बेसिकली फाइव डी सिस्टम जैसे कि थ्री बाई थ्री सिस्टम में आप थ्री डी में आपके पास प्लेन होते हैं ना लीनियर सिस्टम ना इट इज अ फाइव डी ठीक है और फाइव डायमेंशन में आपके पास जो सॉल्यूशंस हैं उसमें दो फ्री वेरिएबल्स हैं और एक कांस्टेंट है मींस फाइव डायमेंशन में ये प्लेन्स बनेंगे ठीक है 
और इनफिनिट मेनी सोल्यूशन आपके गिवन लीनियर सिस्टम के ये हैं आई होप यू गेट इट इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन यू कैन आस्क मी सर आई हैव क्वेश्चन जी बेटा सर आपने पीछे बताया था कि फॉर एग्जांपल x3 और x5 की हमें वैल्यू मिल गई थी तो आपने हाँ. बताया कि हम तीन वेरिएबल्स की जो है वैल्यू डिटरमिन कर सकते हैं वो कैसे बताया था सर आपने हाँ देखिये आपके पास लीनियर सिस्टम जो था ओरिजिनल ओरिजिनल लीनियर सिस्टम दिस वन इज योर ओरिजिनल लीनियर सिस्टम इसमें आपके पास नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन कितनी है तीन और नंबर ऑफ वेरिएबल्स अननोन वेरिएबल्स कितने हैं फाइव फाइव सो यू कैन फाइंड एज मेनी एज द वैल्यूज ऑफ वेरिएबल्स एज द नंबर ऑफ इक्वेश ठीक है जितनी नंबर ऑफ इक्वेश हैं एट मोस्ट उतने वेरिएबल्स की वैल्यूज फाइंड कर सकते हैं नॉट मोर देन दैट ओके सर थैंक यू ठीक है अब यहां पे मैक्सिमम तीन वेरिएबल्स की एंड आई एम सेइंग एट मोस्ट मैक्सिमम इट कैन बी टू एज वेल वन एज वेल डिपेंडिंग ऑन योर रिड्यूस्ड एच फॉर्म अगर यहां पे रिड्यूस्ड एच फॉर्म में आखिर वाली रो जीरो हो जाती तो फिर आपका एक वेरिएबल और कम हो जाता है आप वो भी फाइंड ना कर सकते आपने सिर्फ फिर दो वेरिएबल्स की वैल्यूज फाइंड कर सकते आप क्यों आई होप यू गॉट इट You get it क्योंकि लास्ट वाली रो जीरो हो गई है एक वेरिएबल आप नहीं फाइंड कर सकते मीन एक जो इक्वेशन है वो कॉन्स्टेंट मल्टीपल है किसी दूसरी इक्वेशन का सो दैट इज द रीजन सो जितनी इक्वेशन होती है एट मोस्ट उतने वेरिएबल्स की वैल्यूज फाइंड कर सकते हो आप ठीक है तो यहां पर तीन इक्वेशन है वेरिएबल्स पांच हैं यू कैन फाइंड द वैल्यूज ऑफ एट मोस्ट थ्री वेरिएबल्स दो वेरिएबल्स द रिमेनिंग वेरिएबल्स You have to set them free variables. ठीक है यहां पर तीन इक्वेशन है तीन वेरिएबल्स की वैल्यूज फाइन की हमने कोई से दो वेरिएबल्स जिनकी वैल्यूज नहीं है उनको आप फ्री वेरिएबल सेट कर दें एंड देन यू राइट द सोल्यूशन ठीक है थैंक यू सर नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस आई होप यू गेट इट इफ यू हैव एनी फर्दर क्वेश्चन यू कैन आस्क मी वन मोर थिंग विच आई नीड टू डिस्कस हेयर इज दैट the third case of possible solutions of linear systems what is the third case under what condition any linear system do not have solution and how do we know by looking at the hln or reduced hln forms whether a given linear system has solution has has at least one solution or they don't have any solution फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर आपके पास यहां पे आपकी जो एच एल एन फॉर्म है इस मैट्रिक्स की यहां पे दिस इज योर एच एल एन फॉर्म दिस वन अगर यहां पे जीरो आ जाता अगर यहां पे जीरो आ जाए फॉर एग्जाम्पल यहां पे इफ दिस एंट्री इज जीरो now this entry is whatever it could be one or any other thing what will be the corresponding linear system uh to this augmented matrix this is the reduced hln form iske corresponding jo linear system hoga wo kya hoga yahan pe kya aayega anyone 0 is equal to 2 0 is equal to 2 aa jayega no solution in that case you don't have any solution to the given linear system that given linear system will be inconsistent whether the augmented matrix is in hln form or reduced hln form yahan pe dekhe it doesn't matter ki yahan pe zero hai ya nahi it doesn't matter yahan pe zero hai ya nahi agar yahan pe zero is equal to last two entries mein ek zero ho jaye yahan pe aur yahan pe non zero hai then in that case you are unable to write back the correct linear system corresponding to that augmented matrix in that case the last equation will show you zero is equal to something which is not possible which is a contradiction in this case your linear system is inconsistent and all kind of these linear systems they do, do not have any solution i hope you get it if you have any question you can ask me 
and in this case technically or graphically uh, the planes are not intersecting uh, uh, and they don't have any common region of intersection in in fact okay they are in they might be intersecting they might be parallel they might not be intersecting they might be intersecting but they they don't have any common region of intersection so that's why uh, the linear system they don't have any solution if you have any question now you can ask me i hope you get this point <laughs> otherwise it's time to finish the lecture of today if you don't have any question uh, i'm going to quit this meeting thank you very much for joining me for this lecture